Hello everybody, one of videos. Today we're playing Amiga today. This is an idea I came up with after doing my top 10 games that I like to other people's dope video, which I'll link in the description below. But we're going to up the ante this time. And this time, a top 10 in a certain order. This is going to be my top 10 most difficult Amiga levels. Yes. It's been tough though. But anyway, we're going to start off with number 10 on the list. Let's go. Okay, let's start this video off with a classic. This is fantastic. Coming at number 10 is Zed Out. Amazing game, came out in 1990. Okay, so the game is Zed Out, a Hong Kong shooter, released for the Amiga Tyrus T by Vendor Arts in 1990, which also included a two-player cooperative play. Vigil celebrations for the success of the previous mission, which annihilated the satellite of the planet Alpha Centauri, ended abruptly, as a long-range scanner showed intense activity on the planet itself. An attack from the planet was imminent. The mission to destroy planet Alpha Centauri begins. The HQ of the Federation now seeks a brave man to pilot the spacecraft Zed Out. What lies ahead is unknown, except the defences are going to be strong and multi-level. And the level I'm referring to features quite some weight into the game, but yes, this game I've only finished once, which is why it features at number 10. But yes, I have got past the level I'm referring to four times, and once resulted in the completion, the only time I've actually completed this game without cheats. But it's superb, I love it, it's a brilliant game, one of my favourites on the media. But yes, the level I'm referring to is level 5. Well, to make this video possible, of course, got to reach the level I'm referring to, but I'm more than happy to play this game. But back in the day, I bought myself four different versions of Kickbox versions of this game, because level two, this one, never ever worked. It crashed every single time. It was such a strange, bizarre situation. Until I got myself a Bigbox version that worked brilliantly. But yeah, it's crazy. Lord. Right, superb. Ah! Oh, Lord. Going well so far. Level 4, 7 lights intact. I'm very happy with that. But we're not at the woods yet. The most difficult level still remains. Oh, me, Jamie. You are very lucky today. I have to admit, you've had some close calls. Ah! This boss has killed me quite a few times in the past. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, not too risky. Okay, I have to admit, a few close calls there, but you're right. Now, both of these bosses feature the early points of the level, and then the final boss is broken to find. But with the right weapons, you should be okay, but if you lose your satellites on a level like this, or a boss like this, should we say, it's a whole different story. There we go, pal. We're on level five now. Okay, we arrive at level five, and this one featured on a demo, which is the first time I played it. I did a bit of research. It's War Amiga, December 1990, and yes, it was this level. I can't remember if you have all the additional skills. I'm not sure if you do, but yes, this is a fantastic level. It looks the bee's knees. It really is good. It's killed me so many times. Nine times out of ten, I've reached the boss pretty much every single time I play it. I do lose occasional life along the way. Right, two lives have been lost already, but yeah, this is by far the most difficult section of the level. It's very difficult because you can you know, find space most of the time. And yeah, these tubes, yes, it's very easy to get stuck. Shoot it too many times, but it's in the wrong place, you ain't going anywhere. But yeah, this section here, you're really in a very, very small, confined space. Not a lot of room to move. But of course then, you've got the evil boss. As long as you've got you know, the satellite on the front, you should be okay. But you can get weapons back quite quickly, but there are the occasional secrets on the way. But yes, of course, this was pretty much inspired by aliens. In fact, many, many games, the Turrican were inspired by aliens. Right, we're nearly there. We're going on the evil boss. Now, I can't remember the tactic. I can't remember how many fully charged shots it takes. Right, one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now it doesn't look too bad at this point, but it changes very quickly, and of course, being underwater is affect your movements. But it's when the water level drops, that's when it goes up at 10,000 gears. You gotta make sure it happens at the right time. Not like that. Not like that. 
Yeah, what is worrying is this one appears at number 10 on the list. But yeah, the reason why this is number 10 is because this one I have finished. And I've got past this four times. One more and it should start to drop. You gotta make sure it drops at the right time. So you've got enough time to get around to the other side. There it goes. Two more? Why not? And also it jumps. Like that! You little monkey! Right, this thing is taking my life away. Only four remain. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. No! Oh! Oh, worked that well. Don't jump. Don't jump. Don't jump. <laughs> sometimes he jumps, sometimes he doesn't. It's a mystery. There you go. Superb. There you go. That appears in number ten. On we go to number nine. That out. There we go, next on the list, coming at number nine is this amazing game, Assassin. Now about a year or so ago, this probably would have been in my top three. But however, the level I'm referring to, I have got past it now, but only a couple of times. Okay, so the game is Assassin, a platform video game with shoot-up elements for the Amiga. It was developed by Sonic Systems and published in 902 by Team 17. The game was updated to be released in 904 as Assassin Special Edition. Now about a year or so ago, I would have put this in at number 3 on the list, but today I took it down to number 9. The reason why that is the case is because the level I'm referring to, back in the day I never got past it, which is level 2, but now I've got past it twice. So I took it down the list, but it's still a very brutal level, it's very long as well, and you start off with four very basic skills. But this is in mission 1, this is called The Landing. Locate entrance to Maiden's secret underground layer, expect heavy resistance, advise maximum use of available force. And it's nice you can select your weapons in the order you want to. I think length is a good place to start. But of course, in the special edition, they replace the boomerang with a laser gun. What we're trying to do now is prevent getting eaten by my dogs. Try and get to that level. But yeah, it's really good. It's a superb game. I really do like it. But I've always preferred this one to the special edition. I have to admit, no personal opinion, of course. But this first level isn't overly long. But when you run out of time, that will kill you. In fact, I can't remember how it affects you. Probably less time. Less points, I expect. Apart from that, it doesn't kill you at all. The character's assassin has been hired to kill the antagonist of the game, Maiden, who is then dropped behind enemy lines and must first disable Maiden's power source and then assassinate him. The assassin is an arm of a boomerang that is razor sharp edge. The game can be controlled by a joystick. The player must guide the assassin through the levels of facing enemies, arranging a vicious dogs to well mounted wall cannons. As well as platforms, the player is able to control the assassin on climbing walls and ceilings as a method of getting around and avoiding enemies. The player can use the boomerang to attack enemies or use bonus weapons that have been gained to achieve certain requirements. I mean, that is a very difficult level. The dogs are by far the most difficult enemy in this game, but of course, they don't feature in the special edition. Right, insert this B. Okay, we arrive at mission 2, the construction zone, progress down the entrance shaft, scroll the crane area and destroy the mechanoids to gain access into zone 3. It doesn't sound like a lot to do, but believe you me, there is. This level is very long and it was always the only stages we have to get off to the worst possible start by falling to my death, mostly. And yes, you have these fans on the side which are absolutely deadly and they keep spawning all the time. They can shoot while on the railings. Now if you fall, you do have a limited amount of time to save yourself, if you land on something flat, or you grab onto a railing, but if you fall the maximum distance, you lose all control of your character and the only thing to do is die, basically. Now, I don't know if you earn digital dice from score on this one, but you can pick up the occasional one along the way. So you want to try and upgrade your boomerangs very early on. Now W is the wider arc, E adds an extra boomerang in the air, P adds more power, S is speed, and L is more length. But yes, if you max all those out, you can fire on cylinders, but you do die, you do lose some of them, not all of them. So what does that mean? I did play this game a lot back in the day, I really, really did, but I didn't get far back in the day. But every time I played it, I was getting a fraction further, but it was only a fraction each time. But I just get thinking, you know, is this like the never-ending level? We can't keep going down and down and down, we're going to the Earth's core at this point. But, yes, we're making some good grounds here, but there's still a lot to see and do. Now, you pick up the lips, you'll get a bit of an idea, and the voice will tell you roughly where to go. But, it's not the most reliable of sat now. Sometimes I'll speak and sometimes I won't. But sometimes it's pretty self-explanatory where you've got to go. The only way is down here. 
You keep firing because you never know where these fans are live on the scene. Pretty much every time I get here, I, I get lost. I get lost all the time. I do find the occasional pick up along the way, but it's a map you really want. But, yeah, it's probably going to end up finding a dead end. I always do, but the time limit doesn't kill you anyway. Ugh, just like else does. Ouch! My lord! Deadly. Right, we're not far away. However, I've lost one life so far, and also time limit, no surprise me, it ran out. It ran out ages ago. In fact, I've never actually reached the end of the stage with the time limit still going. There's no point having it, in my personal opinion. But yeah, I've had to edit down quite a lot to cause it too long. But yes, first time I saw this boss for the very first time, I was so shocked to actually see it for the first time. I was actually so surprised to find it that I had no life remaining. But yeah, should I go along the ceiling, avoid the mines, and drop down? I can't move your energy from the to the boss battle. I hope so. It's pretty appalling, I have to admit. Down we go. It does repent it. That's fantastic. Right, you shoot the face. Put the saws, and if possible, use a special. Like that. Superb. The trouble is, when you use it, you can't move. That's fine. But yeah, that took years, and no kidding, years to finally get past that level. It really is ridiculously long. But the mission 2 is complete. I think the game's got about five levels, maybe six, something like that, but that's probably the longest level of the game. I imagine so. Star bonus, slow bonus, hit the plan bonus, and boost bonuses. But there we go, a really, really difficult level indeed. And a great game though. But there we go, overall score, we are Sniper. But there we go, fantastic, as more enough as that is Assassin. Okay, we go from one of the longest levels of this video to one of the shortest levels of this video. Next to number eight is Crazy Sue, who vision this here in 1990. Great game, love it, played loads back in the day, but never finished it. Okay, so the game is Crazy Sue, a Judy Pepper game that was first released in 1990 in issue one of Mega Fun magazine by MC Publications. In the game, the player takes control of a little girl named Crazy Sue, who must defeat the evil wizard of doom. The game spawned a sequel, Crazy Sue Goes On, released in 1992. The game itself isn't only long, but yeah, Mega Boy played this loads back in the day. The reason why this is higher than Assassin is because this one has the evil time limit. And not just a time limit, but also a very fast time limit. And also a lot of physical text and laser jumping, which of course Assassin does not have. But yes, I did get past at level 2, even though I put out quite a fight at the early stages. But I have got to level 4, but I never got past level 4. But the biggest issue for me was level 3. Go for the exit door. Okay, level 2. The story is quite short, but told in each other's screen. In the land of Yuanior, people are in trouble because of the evil Wizard of Doom who is enslaving them. But there lies an, an old prophecy of a girl who can defeat the wizard. That girl is Crazy Sue, who must try to reach the lair of the evil wizard during the game. Now, when you start the game, you have no additional skills. All you have is a small jump. However, each level, there's actually an icon you can pick up that allows you to double your jump. We can't shoot until level 4. We can actually shoot lollipops. Now, the trouble is, I have got to that level multiple times, but I've never got past it, because every time I get there, I've got hardly any lives left. I didn't lose so many on the free. This game has quite a lot of pixel perfects. So many big jumps land on small platforms. And evil enemies and wasps. Avoid the acorns. But yes, time limit, yes, it's there. But it's very, very quick. But yes, levels themselves, certainly the earliest stages of the game, aren't overly long. They are certainly challenging. Okay, level three. Back in the day, I lost a lot of lives here. Jump over the rats. The time is very quick, it always is. The trouble is, there's two situations at this level where you have pixel perfects. The first one is the worst. I'm at times, I've run out of time. I'm trying to make this jump. Do you jump from there to there? Got right on the edge. Jump is something burnt to a crisp. Don't go in the water either. Right on the edge. No, right on the edge. Come on, Crazy Sue. There you go. Right, 70 seconds remain. However, it's not, because you're a lot faster than that. Pick up any presents or coins on the way, but you've got to pick up the keys. We'll find it at the door. And we'll jump from there to there. From there to there. And we'll jump over these different flames. They move around and swipe. Not the way you expect them to. Oh, 23 seconds remain. Right, okay. Go again. Three lives. Okay, here we go again. 
attempt number two. Let's jump number one. Yes. Five seconds. But yeah, if you've got some extra time, let's go for it and pick up anything. It all helps. But yeah, me and Bella played this loads back in the day. It's a two-player game, but unfortunately not at the same time. But yeah, we very, very rarely got here, and we never ever got past here. Not in the old, old days, anyway. No, Jamie! <laughs> right, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. There we go, time to get away, though. <laughs> Okay, we've one attempt at level four, but also back in the day we did also play Crazy Suit Goes On. And um, we got nowhere in that game. Nowhere near as far as in this one, even though we didn't get overly far in this one either. But that game, we didn't get past the first section. What ruined it for us on that one was the horrendous jump. But also, again, so many things were perfect. Lots of spikes. The jump was really, really horrendous in that one. Didn't actually realise you can actually get additional skills, but we never got far to realise it actually had them. But anyway, this is also very good. The music is great in both games. This also has also different jumps. But if you find it, you find the little pop, and then use it against the enemies. But back in the day, we had no idea. We never got this far. Right, we can now shoot. But again, it's a very, very narrow platforms. Pow. Pow. There. Yeah, I've got it quite a few times, but these jumps tend to ruin the day, really. Ow. Look at that. Time as well. There you go. Superb. There we go. Amazing game. There's no more enough footage. That is crazy soon. There we go, coming at number seven, it's this amazing game. Rubber and Sticks, only have it on the CD32, don't have it on the Mega, not a box version anyway. It's a fantastic game by Cool Design, but I've never finished it. Okay, so the game is Rubber and Sticks, a such grand platform game for the Sega Metro Genesis and Mega CD32, developed and released by Cool Design. The Genesis version was released by Tengen in the United States and featured a promotional tie-in for the Bubble Genesis Bubblegum brand. The player controls Bubba, a redneck character who is accompanied by a sensitive stick named Sticks. Sticks can be used in various ways that Bubba must defeat enemies to get past certain obstacles. For instance, Sticks can be thrust into a hole inside of a wall to allow Bubba to get to higher grounds. The game itself is really well done, but it loads back in the day, but I've never actually finished it before. This first level is superb, it really is well done. The second level, however, was not a fan of it. I got past it, but it's very slow paced. It really is long, it really does slow the game down. But I got past it multiple times. But yes, the level I'm referring to is level 3. I've never ever got past it. I've had so many attempts over the years, but it's so incredibly brutal. A reportedly complete Sega Mega CD version was planned for release in January 1994, but was cancelled for unknown reasons. Former developers at Call of Design have confirmed its existence. Right, not too shabby. A few more things, and then we're on the way to the next level. However, I'm not going to include the next level because it's so long. That character there is Walder. Oh, oh, oh. Take you on to the next stage. Three lights in tat and a full block of energy. Okay, level three, give it one quick go. Let's see how far we get. However, I didn't actually realise when you finish the stage that your energy just got to finish. You've got to have one bit of energy. That didn't last at all. No time at all. But anyway, of course, being in a volcano, you should be bats full of debris, and of course, lava plenty. Now, I have got past this section quite a few times, but not about losing some energy or the occasional life or two. Don't get nowhere near as much energy in this level as you did in the previous one. But anyway, we've got to try and make the screen shake a little bit. It's got a little bit of a, another world twist this one when you go into the cave. You use a lot of these boulders to your advantage, and also sticks plays a bigger part. You need to put some platforms in place as well. And they can't hit the bats, you just can't kill the bats. Right. Tightrope walk in, which is a bit of a mystery, I have to admit. I don't actually know what the best approach is. When he starts to shake, that's giving you a sign that he's going to fall down. But if there's nothing down there that's going to kill you, you should just get up and have a go. But what I tend to do is I tend to crouch. That should keep him on his toes. But later on, you have to do this again, but you've got to be even quicker at it. And that's the bit I can't seem to get past, because I can't do it quickly. Right. Right, what we need is a boulder. We need it as a stepping stone. Okay. 
mean, it is a good stage. It really is a good challenging stage. I do like a challenge. But yeah, it's just a little bit of a different side, this one. I have to admit, back in the day, this bit did confuse me. I didn't know what to do. Right, energy on the left-hand side. So basically, you set him on his way. Flattens him, you can wait patiently, and it will hurl him into the air. And that's the first section. Now it goes up for 10,000 gears. Because what you're trying to do now, like the second level, you've got to try and find a certain quantity of items. In this case, light bulbs. Every switch you find lights up one of the light bulbs. And this is what I can't seem to do. I've never lit up all of them. Okay, that's two. What I'm trying to do now is find a way back. This is going to be a very uncomfortable moment for Bubba if I time this badly. Steam! Uh, there's a lot of steam around. There's another one. Okay, this is the point I can't get past. This has killed me so many times. What you're trying to do here is basically get from one side of the rope to the other, but this time the rope's on fire. So you've got to be very quick. The trouble is I don't know what the best tactic is for doing this. I have to keep doing that every time it starts to shake around, which allows the flame to catch up with you. And falling down there, of course, you're going to take a few hits along the way. But I don't know what the secret is. I don't think the, the fire is timed. It just happens when you get to a certain point. And of course, you've got steam. You've got Lava and fire! I just haven't figured out how to get past this section quickly. So that, that was a delay that time. Huh. Okay. Right, I've never been here before. This is the first. Uh, these throw hammers at you. Oh, looks more. Killed by a hammer. Okay, Bubba, what is the secret? What is the secret? Just, oh my lord, right, okay. I still don't know the secret. Oh. Oh. My lord, I don't know what I'm doing there. But anyway, fantastic game, that's more than a foot is, but yeah, it, it's a level I will get past one day, one day I'm sure. And that is Bob and Sticks. Okay, coming to number six, if we're talking about difficult levels, we've got to have Product X in there somewhere. It's the original version, came out in 1992, it's superb. Okay, so the game is Product X, a Hollywood scoring shooter for the Mega, released in 92. It was developed and published by Team 17. The game resembles Konami's social shooter games such as Radius, Salamander, and Prodius. It's also called it MS DOS. I have to admit, I've never seen that version, but anyway, this game is fantastic. The video doing a video based on the difficult levels. What X is going to be in there. Now, even though I have to think this version and the special edition multiple times, it is still a very challenging game to play, even though I've finished it so many times. I've got my stream. But the level I'm referring to, even though back in the day it was level 2. Now, the version I got in 1993 worked for about a year and it stopped. And then there was a little bit of delay until I got the C32 and I managed to get the special edition on the C32. And eventually I was reunited with the original version once again. And it took me quite a few years until I got that first completion. But of course, the original version is a lot longer in length and of course a lot more challenging. You start off with less weapons, and yes, Team 17 knew this, which is why they released a special edition. They've done quite a few of their games. But it's superb, but yes, the level I'm referring to is level 3. That's the one that's giving me the most grief. We've got to try and get there first. 
But yeah, go for plasma. If your plasma is the best way to go. Select now for speed up. Second place, many years in the future of colonized space, military scientists dispose of a countless and defective military droids on an uncolonized terrestrial planet called Wix. Droids eventually become sentient by way of events start attacking all of mankind, using the station to continuously create more war machines. It's the player's mission to undergo Project X and eliminate the droid forces. This game has five levels, five bosses, and a bonus round. The bonus round is the only way you can earn the in this game. But even this first level is very challenging, but of course, not as challenging as others, but this still does provoke quite a fight. You want to try and get off to the best possible start by getting as many weapons as possible. And it's fantastic, it really is good, on we go level 2. Okay, level 2, you dive into the hazy upper atmosphere of the planet Wix. The beautiful sculpture mountains give no inclination of true following lurking beneath the planet's surface. Caution, electrical storm activity can cause havoc. And of course, we're trying to avoid surface contact. This level looks absolutely tip top, even to this day. But this is no easy task. This level's killed me so many times. The boss battle itself has killed me more times than any other boss in this game. And the very early days of playing this game, yes, I was using guns. And yes, guns is good, and of course, being the second one on the list, very easy to upgrade. But I realised over the course of time that yes, plasma is the way to go. And ever since realising that plasma is good, I've always stuck with it. In fact, I've never actually finished this game with Magma or the Laser Beam. Now, Magma is quite popular with many, many people as well, but I don't think many people mention Laser Beam. But of course, being quite near the end of the list, it's going to take some time to upgrade. But it's good, but it doesn't have the diagonal bullets, guns, and the plasma. But anyway, we do have Stealth, and it's brilliant with this boss. On this special edition, it takes less hits. But even with this, it does take quite some shooting. It's very difficult to do if you don't have stealth. When it's shooting in this state, you can't actually shoot it at all. You wait for it to stop doing its attack and move around and then go for the kill. So there we go, superb. And we go to level 3. Okay, we arrive at level 3. As your ship dies down to deep cavity at the surface, you're bound for the planet's inner sanctum. As your thermal shields glare, you enter the swollen cauldron of heat and fire. The volcanic caverns lie ahead. Now even though I've died more times than level 2, for this video I've gone for level 3, for one reason, and one reason only, it's the falling debris. I'm not a fan of falling debris in games. The trouble is, this level, it happens three times, and it's killed me so many times. Now sometimes I use the stealth if I have it, and sometimes I'll visit for the biscuit and try and go on without it, or save it, should we say. But it is so difficult, it's such a challenge. That's why, even this day, it's still very tough to try and get past it. But it doesn't happen every single time, but also the boss battle in this one, only a few times have I killed it without stealth. Nine times out of ten, I will try and get there with stealth, but sometimes I've lost it just before approaching it. Then it gives you a very tough task. There are plenty of opportunities to get powers. And also, your homing missiles are called a heat seeking, so here, they don't do a lot of good. Alright, falling debris number two. Not as long this time. Stealth is still there, but I'm going to save it. Sometimes though, I try and save it, and I lose it. It doesn't mean to do that, it's just it itself. Of course, in this version, it doesn't forward and back quickly, it also activates your weapons. I mean, it's okay, it's going to protect me from these, but even these are difficult. But also, I don't think it's actually the same attack pattern every time. I don't think it's actually anywhere, but it's safe. There's probably the one of very few enemies in this level with a heat-seeking missile who actually watch your advantage. Alright. Of course, this is the enemy from the front of the box, and even with this, it has killed me quite a few times. But also, the occasional falling dead just fall from the top. And also, you can actually be killed by an explosion. That stealth has worn off. Not at the right time, though. We need a lot of luck on this bit. That's superb. But yes, the explosions can actually kill you. It has killed me a few times. This time. <laughs> Could have done though. Alright, full in debris number three. Stealth is not active yet. That's close. Too close. Yeah, I think I've only killed the boss without the stealth three times. Alright, however, we should be okay now. Alright, stealth is there, it's ready to go. We're in a rock and roll. There we 
course, if you're playing a Pidia, you usually do have stealth as well. But if you keep collecting the icons, it'll just go around and continue this loop. Whereas here, it won't go any further than stealth. It'll stay there until you're active. Stealth. Right, it's on. And you kill the blue one first, then you get to kill the, the red one. Kill the red one first, and it moves on. But there we go, superb! There we go, tough level, that is Product X. There we go, coming at number 5, it's Robocop 2, another fantastic game. Never finished it before, came out in 1990. Okay, so the game is Robocop 2, a platform shooter video game based on a Night Night film with the same name. The game was released on several platforms including Amiga, Amazon GX4000, Atari ST, Commodore 4, Game Boy, NES, and also the Sex Spectrum. Ocean Software developed and published several versions of the game, while David Ease manufactured the arcade version. And I have to admit, I've never actually seen the arcade version, but it's also a fairly good version. Played it loads back in the day, but it took me years to get past this first level. And even though you do have more lives at the start of this game than you did in the first game, it's still a lot more difficult than the first game, but what's you do here? Negotiate the river complex, collect 10 new capsules, destroy the drug lab, and rescue all hostages which is life. And two is the maximum you can hold. But you can also get additional continue if you manage to complete the bonus stage, which I've also never ever done. Now you pick up so many of these items. Some work for you, and some work against you. Some take time away, and some will add time to your clock. But I have to admit, I don't even run out of time in this game, not once. There's so much action going on here. Now this bit here is quite random, you've got to get to the top of the platform, every time you click on an item, it will knock you down the platform, or even knock you off the platform altogether. But yeah, it's superb, it is really well done, action packed, we love that, but yes, the level I'm referring to for this video is level 2. Here's another nuke. Well, the bit you used to kill me the most back in the day was these evil cogs, now you can shoot the cogs, the trouble is, in this area there's quite a lot of hostages around, so you want to shoot the hostages by mistake. There's like three of them, they're very small space. Uh, one there, one up there, and also another one down here, if I remember rightly. There we go. And also, every time you find a hostage or pick up a nuke, you get a small bit of energy. Not a lot, but it's better than nothing, I suppose. Megan Time ST version was developed by Special FX and published by Open Software, which also developed the NES and Game Boy versions. Programming for the Mega version began months before the film's release, as a guide the Special FX team were given a pre release version of the film. That excluded several scenes. The team was also given a primary script of the film and pictures of all characters. Audio samples of the film, including Robocop's gunfire and footsteps, were also added to the Mega version, and the ZX version and Mega versions included digitalized scenes from the film. And there we go, we destroy the drug slab, which we've got just over five and a half minutes. A superb two license hat and nearly a full block of energy. 98 kills, 40 nooks collected, and 10 hostages. Okay, level 2 is what I'm referring to. Level is simple. Arrest Kane. That's all you have to do. That's all it tells you to do. But I've never actually managed to achieve it. Of course, there'll be enemies of plenty all over the place. But also, quite a lot of the pickups in this level to actually work against you. Some will drain your time and some will actually reverse controls. Now, if you fall into the acid, that's an instant kill. You've got to stand on the edge and jump onto the crane. You can shoot from the crane. Press up to dismount the crane. That'll drain my time. Right. Uh, pretty much as soon as you kill an enemy, another one's going to arrive almost immediately. But yeah, the Bazooka people are the worst. Also, you get platforms that fall beneath you, and also acid drips. Yeah, but I don't actually know where Kane is located. I don't even know how long this level is. But you can watch this if you can, that will give you a little bit of energy. Anything will do. That's full energy. That's even better. We haven't got any additional weapons yet. But each weapon is limited in bullets. Unfortunately, I've missed one hostage. Right, up we go. Unfortunately, I've missed one hostage. There's another one, though. And rescued. Rapid fire, I think that was. Scatter gun, go for that. With a scatter gun, it's quite easy to kill a hostage, though. Up there. Up there. In, yes, and I went. Pixel perfect in this case. Right, but here again, energy isn't great, but I'm sticking with this gun. Uh, I think it's probably the right way to go. Right, this is quite a pixelated jump, that one. There's a bomb up there as well. Do not fall off this platform. Uh, 
so many bad platforms in this place. Look at all this acid I expect. Another one. Oh, close, but no cigar. Alright, last go, last life, last attempt. Well, we're here again. Energy's okay, but as you can see, lights are not. I don't know how pixelated Robocop's feet are. You've got to be right on that edge. This is not the sort of game I was expecting to have pixelated jumps, to be quite honest. Again, so many platforms fall beneath you. Yes, I'll take that. Yeah, I'll take that. Right. Look at this. That is really pushing the limit there. <clears throat> Where is Kane? Energy, yes. Where's Kane though? Shield, I'll take it. Uh, right, down here. 1 minute 26. This looks promising. Oh, I don't like these bombs. Alright, oh, okay. We'll do it again. Oh, I don't believe it! <laughs> well, there we go. Fantastic game. I'm certainly making progress, though. Robocop 2. Okay, for number four, I picked this amazing game. So I can notice to present Orc, a WJS design game, copyright 1991. Okay, so the game is Orc, a video game made for the Tyrus T and Amiga, developed by WJS Design, published by Sysnosis in 1991. Orc is a platform game with five levels, takes place on an alien planet known as Siskai, where the main character is an alien called Chukapol, who must fight his way through each level. The levels are filled with such tasks such as solving puzzles and defeating enemies. And I love it. I bought this game back in the day for £4.99. Even though I haven't got far, I always fell at the second level every single time I play this game, and always for the same reason. This game, you have limited amounts of fuel and limited amounts of ammunition. The first level, which is this one, is short and sweet. We don't need fuel here. We can pick up fuel along the way. I was always, always running low on fuel, or running out of fuel, on the second level, so I was always failing at the second hurdle. So this game has a lot to offer, but unfortunately I never saw much of it. But it is really well done. At the top left corner of the screen, you've got ammunition, and the top right corner of the screen, you've got on fuel. But we don't need it yet. What we're going to try and do is find the key before we've done. We'll use the key to open the door, get a gold, and use the gold to pay a toll that takes on to the next stage. We've got a space bar, and use the key, and we've got our gold. Okay, so once you've got the gold, you head over to the right hand side. Also, energy can be picked up along the way. Your energy is in the top middle of the screen. Quite similar to Shadow of the Beast. Right, over here is energy, and up there is where we need to go. But it's fantastic, I really do like it. I love the animation as well. The music's great, there's not a lot of it in this game. Right, pay the toll. Space bar, gold, open door, and we go level two. Okay, level two, this is a launch pad. They take off and you land on the launch pad. There's plenty of those around, but back in the day, I was always getting lost. And nine times out of 10, when I got lost, I was in the air and I got lost. And I couldn't find the way around, I couldn't find a launch pad, and my fuel drains very quickly. And then you're stuck, basically. The enemies don't really respawn. The occasional one does, but most of them don't. You've got to try and pick up the sphere. What you do is use that to deactivate laser switches. And also, you've got to take it with you. But it's essential you know where you're going in this game. Pick up the fuel whenever you can, pick up ammunition whenever you can, and pick up the scanner. Use that on the computers. The energy's there, the boss battle is here. You've got to try and find three keys. There we go, there's one. Over here is energy. Right, pick up the energy, fly up, and pick up the sphere, and take it with you. Right, yeah, don't stay in the air for too long. But yeah, it's essential you know where you're going. Back in the day, I didn't. Right, pick up the, the quartz. Right, and that should respawn. Again, take that with you, and find a landing pad. So there we go, that is saving the floor. Okay, that's fuel, takes us from 2 to 3. So ammunition takes us from 4 to 5. Or the surf key number 2. I did find the occasional key back in the day, but I had no idea where you were supposed to use it. And you can use the computer, but only if you've got the scanner. It tells you a little more information about each item and 
how you use it, what its purpose is. You know what this purpose is? It deactivates the laser, which up the drips. You do occasionally get ammunition and fuel along the way. Right, so we use the quartz. That also deactivates the lasers. Right, what we need now is a flame. Now we use the quartz, we go from here. There's the flame. We need some of the land. Now we've got to use a flame on a rope. Yeah, back in the day, I never ever did this. Uh, flame. Burns the rope, there you go. Ammunition, check. Right, down here, we've got to find a jug. Pick up the jug, that contains a rocket. But I've got to get access to the rocket. So basically, you've got to break the jug open. Okay, gotta make sure the landing is a safe one. If it isn't a game like this. Right, land. Now we're gonna try and break open the jug. Put the jug on the floor where the arrow is. Fly up the top. And you shoot a rock. The rock falls down, breaks the jug open, revealing a rocket. Use the rocket to get key number three. Does that make sense? Right, up here, there's the rock. Also, energy. Don't fly for too long. It's quite costly in a game like this. That break the jug, hopefully. There's a rocket, and also, again, we need to land. Okay, near there. What we're trying to do now is get the key. Key number three is up there. However, you use the rocket, but only have one chance. So make it count. Space bar, fire, hits the key three, it drops down. And we've got, now we've got to find a computer. Use all three keys with the scanner. Gives us the code to find the exit door. But yes, yeah, a really good game, but yeah, this did cause quite a lot of problems back in the day. I just couldn't figure it out. It was going round and round in circles and then eventually running out of fuel. Okay, object analysis scanner module allows the computer to scan immediate area where the carrots. This is where you need a notepad and pen. Number one of three keys acquired. Four, three, four, one. Three of three keys acquired. Two, four, two, four. And two of three keys acquired. Two, one, two, three. This is where you want the manual. It tells you in the manual what they all mean, basically. It's complicated. Right, energy, check. All we've got to do now is fight the boss, defeat the boss, and input the code. And we get out of here. This super game, I really do like it, but yeah, this caused quite a lot of problems back in the day. I just couldn't figure it out. I was getting lost all the time and running low on fuel. Or worse, running out of fuel. Right, 2314, what do you vote it down? Two. Three, one, four. If you get it wrong, game is over. There we go. Superb orc. Love it. There we go. Another superb game. Coming number three. It's a classic. It's tough. This is Blood Money. Huge, awesome soundtrack. David Gibson will be approved of this one. Okay, so the game is Blood Money, a side scrolling shooter video game developed by DMA Design. A public in 1989 for Amiga, Atari City, and then a DOS. The Commodore 64 version followed in 1990, and the game is set on four locations on the planet, where the player must fight off evil enemies and evil boss battles. And of course, like Project X, if it's a video based on difficult levels, it's also got to be in there. The trouble is, what level do I feature? What ones I struggle with the most? I mean, the game itself is absolutely brutal. Never finished it before without cheats. But anyway, what makes it difficult is, yes, I'm going to pick number three. That's the one I tend to struggle with the most. When you start the game off, you can only go into planets, because you only have $200. The first level, you need $100. The second level, you need $200. However, you earn additional money when you finish the stage. But, yeah, you need 300 for stage three. So you've got to try and finish one planet before you go on to level three. But this is a money snatcher, so if anyone says it's in, it will steal your money. I use money to buy additional weapons and upgrades, but when you die, you lose everything you purchase, you go back to the basics. And what I struggle with the most is collecting the money. That's what tends to kill me the most. I tend to be a little bit too greedy at times, and also these turrets are absolutely deadly. And there's so many things that lead to a very simple one death, you say. Try and pick up as much money as you can, it really does help in this game. You're gonna need as much money as you can get. Oh, lovely, lovely, jubbly, lovely money, love it. Superb! 
Well, I have got very far in this game, but back in the day, I got nowhere. But I have managed to get to the fourth and final planet on two occasions, once on live stream, but fortunately, I failed. But it's still a very good achievement, and this game has no continues at all. If you fail any point, you have to go back and do all those planets again. Okay, as you can see, my energy is absolutely atrocious, but we arrive at the boss battle. And as it is a bonus, I've actually got an additional weapon. It's quite rare, I have to admit. But not rare that my energy is low. You've got to try and shoot the cork. Only when it's open, but it's not open all the time. One mistake, and we're going to lose everything here. This is a game you desperately don't want to lose your weapons. With additional weapons, you should be okay. But there we go, fantastic. On we go to... Not level 2, we're going to skip level 2 and go to level 3. We do earn additional money by finishing each planet. We've got $602, which is enough to go on level 3. It's enough to go on level 4. Okay, so for this video, the level I'm referring to is this one. This is the one which I do tend to lose most of my life. And what is making this one quite a difficult level to get past, even though I have passed quite a few times, I don't gain many skills. There's not many areas we earn a large sum of money. There's quite a lot of enemies here that don't earn a single dime, or they're very difficult to kill and pick up the money in the process. There's so many enemies on screen, and sometimes, like I say, I die when I'm trying to pick up the money. I'm trying to pick up the money, and you're not focusing on what's going on on screen. It could be a bullet, or an enemy moving around in a different pattern. And that's what tends to kill me the most. But yes, it's, it's been greedy, basically. Right. Where? <sighs> so now where? Oh my lord, that's going to hurt in the morning. Right, at the moment of time, I have got $1,007, or I'm 007. James Bond, Bond, James Bond. I just to kill, I just died. I've got plenty of money in the bank account, get those back. Right. Oh, I forgot about this bit. Lord! You're eating alive. Nasty way to go. Okay, once again, we're in a boss battle with very limited amounts of energy. And you've got to try and shoot the lumps on its head, and then shoot the face itself. Once again, weapons are quite basic. Now, there is one weapon you can buy in the shop which makes your bullets go to fall into the screen. What you want on a level like this, or a boss like this, you say. The trouble with that one, because the bullets are on screen longer, that limits the amount of time you can fire another bullet. But that way, you can fire from the far left and you make contact on the right. Yeah, most of the bosses in this game are fairly basic in terms of shooting techniques. But yes, the biggest change is level 2, which has three words. Right, shoot the face. It's not a bad boss, this one. It can be time consuming, but it's going alright. But energy is not great, but we should be okay. We keep shooting the right point. There we go. Boom and pow. Fantastic game. Brilliant game. Level 3 is done. That is blood money. We've got $401. There we go. On we go to game number 2. Can you tell what it is yet? I reckon you probably can. It's fantastic. Comment number two is Navy Seals. This is a game I played loads back in the day, but this is extremely difficult. Never got close to finishing this one. Came out in 1990. Okay, so the game is Navy Seals, a shooter platform video game, developed and published by Ocean Software. It was first released in United Kingdom for the Amta CBC, Amta GX4000, and Cobalt 64, released in 1990. And then re-released for the rest of Europe in ZX Spectrum, a Target ST, Cobble Amiga, home computer the following year, then ported to Game Boy on September 1st, 1991, in the United States. The game is based on the film of the same name, and follows the protagonist, Lieutenant Dale Hawkins, as he progresses through five side-scrolling levels. Now, when it comes to a side-scrolling platform, it doesn't get much more difficult than this. It's brilliant. I do like it, though. I played loads back in the day, but I've never, ever finished the second level. Three reasons why this game is so difficult. The one is of course the time limit. Two is full damage and three is one hit kills. Now the computer players can actually fire at an angle, but you cannot. But the animation is superb, you can jump, you can crawl, you can grab onto the ceiling, but you can't grab onto the ceiling very long. And what we're going to try and do is try basically find all of these crates that has an American flag on it 
and put a TNT on it. It tells you down the bottom, left corner of the screen, how many we've got left, which is three, and how many lives we've got, which is five. You can also get these weapons on the way, which of course is limited bullets. Anything from a machine gun, to a flamethrower, even a bazooka, which I think is limited to six rockets. But this game does have quite a lot of blind jumps and blind falls, and yet just for a small distance will drain your energy. For a big distance, it's a kill. Being shot in the back is an instant kill. Right. But yeah, the time limit is so brutal. Even on the f second level, it's not far into the game. Even though the game's not overly long, I've never got past it. But I do like playing it. And the CG4 version is good as well. But yeah, sometimes it's very difficult to tell where the enemies are until it's too late. Um, but yeah, I don't think you earn additional lives in this game. Not at all, I don't think. But anyway, got the flamethrower, which of course is limited. Grab onto the ceiling. And... Try and shoot them when they're not looking. Pickaboo, I see you! Have some of that. One more to go. Yeah, this is the easy level. My lord. Fantastic. On we go to level two. Okay, let's give level two a try. How it throws the kitchen sink at you right from the go. Another thing that makes it difficult though is yes, you can kill enemies by jumping on their heads, but for some reason it hurts your character as well. Never really understood why. It shouldn't really, should it? But anyway, a lot to do, and the time limit, yes, you start off with five minutes, which sounds like a lot, but it's not really, especially when there's an evil elevator in involved. And you're wasting a lot of time waiting for the elevator to arrive at the part. But you can actually be killed, no surprise really, by the elevator. But anyway, we've got the bazooka. Doesn't matter where they are on screen, if they're on screen, you can fire anywhere on the screen, and that will burn them to a crisp. If you die, you lose the current weapon you have, you go back to basics. But you don't want to be wasting these rockets. Yeah, when you don't know where the lift is, waiting for it can drain a lot of time. But of course, you can climb, but it's risky. Very risky. But I don't really know what the best approach is. I've tried starting from the top, starting from the bottom, focus on one side. I don't know. Right, just got him there. And you as well. Right, we're out of rockets. Right, 11. Three minutes, 36. I mean, I've got close a number of times, but the time limit keeps winning, unfortunately. But yes, it's difficult when you're going down screen, you are going up screen. Because, again, there's so many times you don't know where you're going. You can't really sort of see where you're jumping to, where there's a platform beneath you. Because a small distance falling is a lot of energy draining. Right, nine. Now around here somewhere there's people. Sometimes you take damage, sometimes you don't. Right, flamethrower is fantastic. Um, and also, when you die, you resume at the last TNT you put down. And that is a good thing as well. Right, I'm probably going to die here though. Right. And if it's going up... It's fine, we're going down. Yeah, energy's really, really horrendous. But I do like the flamethrower. It goes through boxes. Right, never mind. We resume play from there. Is there one up there? No. Okay, five to go. Two minutes, 16. Also, this ladder stops, and it's taken me completely utterly by surprise multiple times. Um, well, I think that is also a flamethrower. I'm hoping so. Superb. Uh, another one. Four to go. We have the flamethrower, and I think the elevator's just gone down. Do I risk it? Yes. Have I done this bit before? No. Have some of that. Uh, three to go. One minute twenty. 
<laughs> Two to go. Elevator's just gone down. Right, let's get down there quickly. Actually, no. Um, I'll take that. Oh, well, he's got to wait for it. I needed the fire. Superb. One to go. My lord, I might do this. I might actually do this. Come on, baby, light my fire! No! Three lives remain, no. 30 seconds. Never done this. Trouble is, he's gonna. Woohoo! Finally! Yes! Superb! Done it! How much time was remaining? I don't know. Blimey. This one only has three, but you have only one minute to do it. Dead already. My lord. Oh my lord. Right. Well, there we go. I actually reached level four. Can't believe it. Well, there we go. I'm happy with that. Fantastic game. Navy Seals. Okay, it's been a tough video. I have to admit, it's been difficult to come up with a top 10, but I think I've made the decision. It's number one on the list. This is Armour Life, written by Art Developments, came out in 1991. This is extremely difficult. Like Navy Seals, no far in this one. Okay, so the game is Armlight, the horror scoring shooter by Cyberdean Systems, released in 1988. And Armlight 2 was in the works, planned for a 1990 release, but was cancelled. In 1901, Armlight, the final one, was released for Amiga Atari ST by Art Developments. It wasn't a port of Armlight, it was a remake by Art Developments. The remake for Game Boy Advance was planned, but was never completed. And this is another superb game on the Amiga, which I've never ever completed. And like Navy Seals, it's level 2 once again. I've never got past it. I got this game, 1992, from a shop in Functioning Kent. I can't remember what the shop it was called, but I bought it on the same day I got Web of Terror. But yeah, this one, I loved it. I still do like it. It's seriously difficult though, but it's another shoot -em up where you lose all weapons when you die. And this one, you cannot afford to lose your weapons when you die. Because it's an uphill struggle all the time. I can get to level 2, even though it took me quite some time before I did. 9 times out of 10, I'll reach it every time I play it, but I'm always dying very early on. So I'm always getting stuff to the worst possible start. But I love it. It's a really good game. I love the music. I love the graphics. I love the parallax. And you have a boss battle at the end of it. It's not the game off with two lives. Whether you earn additional lives from score, I'm not sure. I haven't got far enough to find out. We can pick up the occasional one along the way. But rule number one, don't lose your weapons. But yeah, level two, once again, I just keep dying. Mostly by falling debris. But this game does have a beam, like an R-type. Hold the fire button down and let it rip. And you do get the occasional midway boss, but again, I've not seen many of them. It's a game I'd like to see more of. And see what else you've got to offer. Because you can also be killed by the arms after you killed the boss. There we go. Right. This will take you to the boss battle. Alright, superb! Let's see what level 2 has in offer today. Right, gotta to shoot the middle. I tell you to use the beam, but there's not really a lot of areas where you're safe in this one. Not a lot of areas to move. I love the music too. Alright, try that. You've got to shoot all four of them. This is a pixel perfect, but for a different reason this time. Luckily, there's no timing on boss battles. more. Go for a beam. Beam me up, Scotty. There you go. Boop pow Very difficult level for an opening level. On we go to level two. Level complete. Right, level two. I've had so many attempts, but I always get off to the worst possible start. I mean, it looks spectacular. It really is good. No real room for error on this one. It's always this. Nine times out of ten, it gets me. But some weapons will actually cancel out other weapons. Oh my 
look. Right. Got a little bit quiet on this one. This is a level I really want to get past. Some of these power-ups do actually harm you. Shoot the snake. Oh, right. Okay, here we go. Weakened weapons. I don't think I've actually even seen the boss of this one. No. Right, it's the falling debris, which I don't like. It's killed me so many times. You do get checkpoints, but you're not always in the right locations. You're not always in the best locations. This game has a lot of falling debris. I'm not a fan of. Trouble is, you're slow now. <laughs> every single time. I don't know if it falls at the same point every time. I have no idea. All right, Jamie, probably be the first of many that can appear on this table today. Okay, here we are again. Fortunately, not as many lives this time. Not as many weapons this time. can get one additional life very early on, but it's also very easy to lose a life very early on. Right, got it back. Right. Yeah, still very, very weak bullets. Oh, what's that? I can't remember. Right. Can you kill these things? No, you can't. Kill their bullets, though. I didn't know that. Never tried. Right, for this bit, it's best to sort of be ahead of the pack. Where's the f Ooh, falling debris? It's now in his. <laughs> Every time! It gets me every time! <laughs> where are you safe? Is there anywhere where you're safe? <laughs> oh no! Okay, now what I'm going to try and do this time, I'm going to try and keep this weapon. I've never actually tried it before. Now you do get a weapon very early on that will cancel out this one. And yes, it is a good weapon, but I want to try and keep this intact. Don't get a lot of chances to keep it, really. Right. Okay, I've never had this weapon at this point. <sighs> That's very rare I have any weapon at this point. Be better, we'll see. What's that? Oh, right, this is a first. This is indeed a first. Never been in this situation before with this weapon at this point of the level. Just don't lose it. It's a shame you can't kill these guns though. It's the evil falling debris. So many games have it. Product X has it. Disposable Hero has it. Car Char Car I think it's called. Or White Snakes. Or White Sharks, it's called. Also has it as well. <sighs> no. Got me again. <laughs> Where? Oh lord, trying to fire at you as well! No more falling debris, please! Right. I've got 
funny thing, we're not we haven't seen the end of it. No, we haven't. So much. Falling debris is my nemesis. Ah! My lord, go away! Why do I have I don't think it's time. I mean, it affects when you go underneath it. Yes, it is. Right, I thought it's time. It's not. It's when you move underneath it. Right. Maybe that's the same with the first bit. I don't know. Lord. Right. It's just... I mean, it's the best go I've ever had, it's no question. But this is tough. Where's the boss? I would like to see the boss one day. Maybe today is that... It is that day. Ah! Oh, I don't believe it! Right, at least I've seen the boss. The trouble is not that room to move. Is that it? No, it's not. I can't believe it! I absolutely cannot believe it! I finally got past it! Holy moly! Blimey! I knew this would be a good idea in this video. That way it gives you more attempts, levels I desperately want to try and get past. And I've done it! I can't believe it! Oh my lord! A little bit faster this one. Not a bad thing. Come on, my lord! <laughs> I'm not in any pain. I'm not. I promise you. I'm enjoying this game. Right. Trouble is, we've lost everything. Speed, bullets, and we're dying. I've died again. <laughs> oh my lord. Game over. Well, I'm very happy with that. At least I got to see a different level. I saw a different boss. We'll be higher than the table this time. Look at that! Two! I'll take that! Absolutely. Well, there we go. I'm tickled pink with that. It's not a completion. I don't even know how many levels this game's got. But to get second in the table of a game which is brutal, I'm delighted with that. But there we go, fantastic game, that is Armalite. Okay everybody, that's more than enough footage, that is my top 10 most difficult Amiga levels. If you like what I do, please do like and comment. You can find me on most platforms, just type in more game, find it fairly easily. When I do videos like this, I do long plays, and I've been making a live stream doing Friday night, you can time of 8 o'clock, it's a whole lot of week. Since I'm dizzy, ciao, bye, see ya. Okay, so the game, this is Assassin, a platform video game with shoot 'em up elements for the Amiga. It was developed by Psychon... Psionic. 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 Okay, so the game, this is Assassin, a platform game with shoot em up elements for the Amiga. It was first by Psytronic Psionic. 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 In the game, the player takes control of a little girl named Crazy Sue, must defeat the evil ever. Uh, uh, Evil Wizard of Doom. The Evil Wizard of Doom. Okay, so the game is Bubble and Sticks, a side scrolling platform game for the Sega Mega Drive Genesis, Amiga C32, developed by an. Very bubble thing. Sticks can be used in various ways to help Bubba by defeating enemies and create obstacles. We'll get past obstacles. Okay, so the game is Robocop 2, a platform shooting video game based on a 1990 film with the same name. The game was released on several platforms between the Amiga, Amstrad GX 4000, the Time ST, Publishers 4, Game Boy, NES, and the ZX Spectrum. Ocean Software developed and published several versions of the Data East manufactured the arcade version. Did I shoot the hostage there? <clears throat> I don't even know. Yeah, you know, I remember that. The demo used to do that back in the day as well. It's very strange. I wasn't sure we were supposed to do it. Okay, so the game is Navy Seals, a shoot 'em up platform game, developed and published by Open Software. It was first released in United Kingdom and Amstrad CBC, Amstrad Strategy. <laughs>